uh, I'm going to show a technology called um, called inverse kinematics. Um, remember what we did last week? Forward kinematics? Did anyone try that with the bending of stuff? Things like that? Okay. This is, this is a modeling technology that came after that that was actually designed to deal with the problems of that. One of the problems of forward kinematics is that you have to spend so much time figuring out how things move. And we don't think that way. Like if I'm, if I'm reaching for a cup um, here, let's say, I don't think like rotate this, then rotate this, then rotate this, then grab that. What I do is I see it and I move this towards it. And animators wanted the same power to do that in software, um, to be able to take the end of something and then just put it there and have everything else do what's called solving. The solving is figuring out how it gets there. Now, interestingly, this has a very real practical application. It's used in robotics all the time. When uh, you see or hear about um, an assembly line where they take a worker and they remove them and replace them with a the robot, they will very oftentimes these days have the, the worker train the robot in that they can take a robot with some sort of arm and they can have the worker actually move the end of the arm and get the robot to figure out all the stuff it does and then repeat it over and over again. Um, so you know, in Softimage, um, the only thing that has inverse kinematics on it is what's called a skeleton. And a skeleton is also a part of another technology which is called enveloping, which is how you get soft things to deform. So if I want to deform an elbow of this jacket, I don't want it to be two solid pieces like armor. I want it to bend nicely. Um, by using a skeleton, I can get that to happen. Um, let me show you where they are. Uh, if I go here where it says skeleton, I can go draw a 2D chain. Do not pick 3D chain. Okay, now I'm going to open a schematic, which we, yep, that's an explorer which is similar, but not exactly, which we had last week. And I'm going to click, and then you'll see a few things happen. I'll click right in the middle of my scene here, and we get that thing called a null. A null is what it sounds like. It's nothing. It's just a location. Now I'm going to click again, and we're going to get a few things. Okay. If I go up here, you see we got this thing called a bone, and we got this thing called an effector, EFF. Now, I'm going to click again and again. And then, if I look on the bottom there, it says a pen bone, end chain, end chain, and exit tool. I'm going to hit my right mouse button, end my chain, and exit my tool. And then I'm going to hit here and see what we have. This made a, um, this made a, 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 basically a chain for me. It made a whole parented structure for me. And, the thing about this parented structure is that only one element in it uses this thing called inverse kinematics. It is this. If I pick this, watch what happens to all this stuff. It all moves on its own. So like last week when we were looking at forward kinematics, what we saw is we could build these things, but then we had to rotate this and rotate this and rotate that. Inverse kinematics lets us build the shape of what we want this thing to do and then allows us to just move this end thing and get it to move. But it's the moving that's the tricky part. Um, this movie, which is called Solving, is based on the relaxed shape of the bones. So I drew these sort of like the way I would want a foot to be, or a leg, I should say, right? Now, because of that, when I move this, it will move generally the way I want a foot to move. But it can respond strangely if I get to weird extremes, see? Now, with this in mind, what I generally do when I'm going to use inverse kinematics is I, I figure out something that I want to follow a certain path, and then I draw that path, and then work from there. And here's another thing about it, and this is a big thing. Um, those are green, which means they're implicit objects, and that means they don't render. See that? I have to use geometry on them to actually see them do anything. Um, I'm going to show you that in a quick example here, and then I'll show you a more practical example where we'll try to make like an inchworm thing. 
um, this is my leg. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stretch my leg out like that right now and I haven't keyframed anything, right? And now I'm gonna take me some geometry and I'll take a few different pieces. I'll take a, um, I'll take a cube and we'll make it smaller. Not that small. And I wanna give it a little bit more detail so it bends nicely. Uh, that's a good start. And I'm gonna position it, I'm gonna position it roughly over these bones in my views like that. Um, and I'll duplicate it a couple times. I'll put in a couple more of those. Put one there and one there and maybe one here. Uh, and now let's put in a sphere too. Polygon mesh. We'll go with a sphere. Uh, I'll make that smaller too. Uh, we'll go for 1.5. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I'll give that a little bit more detail like that and let's position it also somewhere along this leg and I'll put in a couple more of those as well. Uh, I'll put one here and we'll put one here and we'll put one down here at the end. And let me check in my views here. I'm going to lose the grid there, lose the grid there and I will move a couple of these like that and let me look at it in my views. Uh, I'm going to take all this stuff and shift it all that way, okay? Now let's look at our schematic. It will start to look a little messier, which is okay. Um, what I want to do is I want all of this stuff here to be controlled actually by this stuff here. So I'm going to do a process called enveloping. Um, this process, what it does is it takes these bones and it says to the points that I pick, I want you to be deformed by these things, not by anything else. Let me pick them all. I can pick all my stuff there. And I'm going to go under envelope, set envelope. I'm going to hit yes. And then on the bottom it says pick the nodes or pick the branch. I'll pick the branch like that. Right end picking. And a lot will happen. OK. Um, they all change colors. That's good. And I'm going to turn this up slightly to 5. Um, these all have these V's on it. I'm going to show something. Um, let's see here. Change. It should be texture controls. Uh, operator links. There we go. Those magenta lines. What these magenta lines mean is that this is now controlled by those things. See that? And what that means is that if I select this end effector, which I'll move down here, Ooh, that could be, is that going to be bad? No, that'll be okay. Um, when I move this end effector, watch what happens. The whole thing deforms and deforms nicely. Um, if I look at a rendered view of this like that, you'll see it's pretty, uh, pretty accurate to what I want it to do. Let's go to um, OpenGL view. So to animate this, let's say I wanted to make a loop of this right now. Um, I'm going to take that end effector and I'm just going to animate the end effector. Uh, I'll go with my translates like that. Let's start it over here, we'll say. I'm going to keyframe it and I'll go forward a couple seconds and I'll key it to there, let's say. And let's see what that looks like. That's not too bad. We'll go down to here. Then we have it go like that and like that, and we'll have it go back to roughly where it started about there, like that. And now I have that loop, which I'm fairly happy with. Uh, now to mix the stuff from last week, let's open up our animation editor. We have just the one thing we animated, which is good. I'm going to select all that stuff, and I want it to cycle. Let's cycle, 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 uh, curves, uh, here we go, cycle, good. And let's see if it will cycle nicely. We'll hit play and see what happens. Goes down, comes around. Might be a little too slow, but I can fix that. Ah, there's a little pop there. Do you see that pop right there? And now I can actually, when I see that pop here, if I look in my animation editor, I can see that same pop there. See that ledge? That's my pop. There's a very easy way to fix it. I can just pick the keyframe. Ah, edit, undo. Erg. Well, let me just check it again. Good. 
I can pick the keyframe and I should be able to move it. Uh, is that pick key? Select curve, select. There we go. When I line this up, now that pop should be gone. And I think it is. Now this takes way too long. This takes six seconds. Let me fix that too while I'm here. Um, I have a tool, a region tool. Um, right now that's taking place over 150 frames. I'm going to have it take place over, let's say, 48 or so. And let's see if that's better speed-wise. Oh, but you see, I didn't get all my curves. I'm going to undo that. I have that green curve that isn't picked. Let's pick that green curve too. Uh, there's all my curves. Now let me pick a region. And let me try to shrink all of them at once. Erg. Let's go here. Let me pick every keyframe again. Now let's region it. Good. Now this should do the whole thing all at once. In fact, we'll tighten it even more. And maybe even tighter. There we go. I like that speed. So that is an application of inverse kinematics um, and enveloping. Um, I could pile this up with what we know from last week. Um, like, just to show you, let's say I want to make another leg. Um, let me select this whole thing here, uh, and I'm going to duplicate it. Edit, duplicate, single. Good. And this gave me a new tree here, which is good. Uh, let me hold down my M key and move it over there. Um, I want to duplicate all this stuff, too. Uh, let's go edit. Duplicate single, and the problem with this single is that it's all connected to that, but I can disconnect it. I'm going to go under envelope, remove envelope, and this stuff I'm going to select. Let's see, I hope I have all of it here. Nope, missing part of it. And let's re envelope it to this new tree. Uh, set envelope, yes. I'll pick these three bones, I'll right mouse them, I'll turn this up. And that means I should now have a new root like that. It bothers me one of the end effectors is wrong, but I'll worry about it later. Um, they're in sync right now, which I don't really want them to be. Oh, I see why. I didn't line them up. Let me go back here uh, and let me remove the envelope from these guys. Take this envelope, remove envelope. Good. Let's push this over here, and now let's straighten out this tree. Um, I'm not going to keyframe it, so as long as I don't keyframe it, it should envelope fine. Uh, like that. Now let me select all this stuff. Ah, just that stuff. Envelope, set envelope, yes. Right mouse. Now let's see. Yes. I have them both. Um, that's sort of a hopping motion, though. I want it to be a running motion. So let me put this leg out of sync. Uh, you know what I need? I need to select its end effector. There we go. Now I'm going to select these keys like that. Uh, and I'm going to shift the whole region out of sync with itself like that, probably. Let me see if I'm right about that. I have to go some further direction. Yeah, maybe that. Let's see how that is. I think I'm missing one exactly, but to tell you the truth, I sort of like them slightly out of beat like that. So let me hit play on them and see what I think of that. Yes, I'll deal with that. Now, let's put a body on it. I'm just going to take a primitive polygon mesh cube. We'll make this a very simple character. We'll put it here, roughly. Let me scale it a little bit. Like that. 
put it like this. I'm going to move his center point like that. Let's put the legs roughly where I want them to be. And I can move the legs by moving the, um, and I've got to go back to object mode, by moving just the root of these trees. Put this one here, we'll put that one there, like that. Um, and now this is getting into a more complex rig. Let me take this guy way over here. Uh, this is actually going to be the body. And were I um, doing this very well, I would rename this. I would probably call this body body like that and then I'm going to hit parent and I'm going to parent the root of this tree and the root of this tree. Note that stuff does not need to be parented at all and I'm going to right mouse it. And now while this thing plays I can actually move this whole thing and it will all move together. See that? So I could now be using inverse kinematics and forward kinematics and enveloping and making what is called a rig. This is a primitive animation rig. A rig is generally a collection of forward kinematics and inverse kinematics and enveloping and scripting and all the other things that make something work into some character looking sort of thing. So like if I wanted this to run around or jump, I would now move the base of it like that and have it do whatever I wanted it to do. Um, you guys want to give this a shot? Try the simple enveloping? Try that, and then depending where we go, we'll go back and try the inchworm thing, okay? Um.